Well, hello there, and uh, welcome to Scott McIntosh's Yodel Dog Down, where I am your host, I am your shooter, I am your cameraman, I am your narrator. I try to do it all, and you'll find that I do a poor job of about all of it. <laughs> so, anyway, here we are in um, in our first set of the day. Uh, it's our very first one. Uh, we're just off of a hill, there's a valley down below, and we are trying to bring the coyotes in, um, and and they're, they're, they've got the sun at their back. So this one gets to be a little bit long, uh, because this one comes a long way. Uh, it, it covered several hundred yards, and the reality is, uh, I just wanted to show sometimes how long it takes to bring one in, when they're just kind of casual and just kind of cruising along. Uh, yeah, took a while. Some coyotes would have taken, you know, 10, 20 seconds to cover the ground that this one's taken, but this one's taken a while. Like I say, it's come a couple hundred yards, uh, so it just takes a minute. Okay, here we got a magpie. There's an old saying that not every magpie has a coyote, but every coyote has a magpie. It's kind of true, but kind of false too. Um, you'll see there's a lot of coyotes that we see that don't have magpies, but oftentimes they do. Magpies like eating dead animals, but they don't have the ability to kill the animals, so they hang with the coyotes so they can pick up the scraps. Done. We're in the same spot, we're just continuing to call and look over another area and we see we see one out there about where this one came from. Five fifty eight, that's a far poke. But if it's not gonna come Okay, there he is. He's out there a ways. We're thinking we might take a shot at him, but we're like, ah, maybe we can get him called in. And then all of a sudden he hears something. Antelope hunting, opening day. I've got him if you want to show. He acted like he was going to call me. <whistles> Sorry, it was getting a little long. So I shortened it. Oh, he's going, he's going. He didn't like that shot. Yeah, there was a shot. You couldn't really hear it on the yeah. on the yeah, camera, but there was a somebody shot about a mile away, and as soon as he heard that shot, oh, he turned Brent, around and took off. Lad, Idaho. Um, you got yourself a coyote. Yep. 
You're out of breath. I'm out of breath. <laughs> that hill was, it should have taken two stops and I didn't take any. <laughs> First coyote down of the day. New day. Here we go. Good female. Nice female. Good looking, good looking coyote. All right, we, uh, Frank got a couple back to back that I did not get on film. So that's what happens. We just load them up. There's a second one. Good for long range, I guess, but not so good for. Mm -hmm. This one, Bryant and I are going to shoot at. He won't come any closer. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. One, two, three. We should have hit him. I think he was like 370 or 380. Ready? Here's the better footage. One, two, three. You saw what happened, but both of us missed. Just barely to the right. Here's Frank. Call this guy up and he just held up, wasn't coming any closer. I think he was like 250 yards or something like that. Short work of him. This one comes running in like crazy. This is the only time we were cussing the dog. The dog did us so much good. Again, there's the magpies. There were several magpies with this coyote. There he was. He was coming right up the hill, and he just all of a sudden took off. He saw the dog come running towards it. There's the dog looking for it to come back, but no coyote came back. She ran it off, and it was nervous. Must have been a pup or a female or something. This is the next set. We're just calling away. Bryant takes the camera. He wants to run the camera and he's gonna let me take a shot. So this is what I was seeing. I mean, it was clear for me, but for some reason the camera videoed it and fuzzy. So that wasn't good, but here's the other footage that Bryant got. Done deal. This is from the same set. We were sitting there and we saw another coyote off in the distance. I'm on him. It's quite a ways. But when they're going away, they we're thinking, ah, why not? Okay, how far above him? about six inches right yeah the wind's coming up that canyon so from right to left so Brian's trying to coach me a little bit on where to hold for windage I kind of already know my holdover and he stops boom I hit right at his feet I believe hard to tell but uh didn't kick up much dust but anyway yeah it was like yeah it was too far all right I finally uh hit a coyote had some bad luck this morning and shot at two of them, went right over the top of the one and the other one I hit high and just blew a bunch of hair out and no blood, nothing, just, just grazed some hair. So anyway, they were too close. They were 50 yards and I, my guns sighted them for a little bit longer than that. So anyway, just made the hit on this one and uh, just walking up to it. Here we go. Yep. The hole's right in front of its eye. It turned its head and looked over its left shoulder, and uh, I shot and put it right through its the front of its face there.
I believe this one's Frank. Yep, I get the shot. You could tell that was Frank because it wasn't me. Bryant's gun's a lot louder. All right, this one got a little bit cool and crazy. That one we sit, we watched him for like 15 minutes, maybe even longer. He wouldn't budge. He was in the same five feet area for a long, long time. Well, I looked over at Bryant and I said, "Hey, play a, a coyote fight." So we started playing some fights, and here come this thing just to running in. Um, looked like it was going to work out just great. So 275, but Frank's thing, should I shoot? And I'm like, ah, let's see if we can coax him in. He's still coming, so let's see if we can keep him coming. I'd, I'd give him a second longer. He either smelled us or he must be afraid of mice. Had enough. Yeah, shoot him. Hit some, hit some. There you go. We all anticipated the shot. It didn't happen. Now he's ready. We're trying to get him to stop. So now he's about 300. Boom, right over him. Hi. Hi. So this guy is going to be gone forever, right? That's the way it works. Now he's at 400. He got him. <laughs> and say we don't have fun. That's going to be a real long walk. 400 yards. Hey, guess what? Roy's back. Only my Roy can shoot a dingo from that far. <laughs> <laughs> For those who have seen Quigley Down Under. He was too close before, so I had that warning. Yeah. I had to give him a warning shot and push him off a little There's bit. There's Roy. <laughs> This one just ran across the road in front of us um, further back and then we got up there and we got set up ready to call. Frank spotted him down in the bottom, just kind of meandering around. He was in the brush. I was having a hard time finding him. There's Bryant. Got one. Big female, number seven. There's seven on the day. Can you believe it? Eight coyotes in a day, the most any of us had ever got. That right there. And the focus was That's out. Purdy, purdy coyote. Look how gorgeous that coyote is. Oh my gosh. So pretty. And that is our eighth of the day, which Bryant shot. Bryant, oh, was it Bryant? 
or Malad, I can't remember your name. <laughs> um, anyway, that's our number eight. That's our record. Every, all of us, no, Frank had had a six before, I'd had a seven, and Bryant had had a seven. And that's our eighth coyote in a day. You did it. Definitely a record, we did it. You did it, yeah. Well, he was the best one of the day, the prettiest, prettiest <laughs> one. He's gorgeous. Gorgeous coyote. Was it a male, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's gorgeous. I was looking at him in the scope. I was looking at him. So that's eight in one day. How many did we get yesterday? Seven. Well, we should have got seven. Yeah. But we got six. Six and a half because we couldn't find one. So, but that's still, that's 14 coyotes in two days. Yep, that's, that feels good. Number eight. Good pile. There you go. Appreciate you watching, and uh, yep, we'll catch you next time.